All right. Uh, before we start talking about things in lecture two, I have a few review questions for you guys. Um, and this is supposed to be pretty straightforward and based on what we saw in lecture one. Now, as I do these questions, uh, feel free to pause the video and answer the question yourself just so that you, you check where you were. Now, the first question is true or false, one millivolt is the same as one millionth of a volt. Well, one, it's right away, I know that the answer is going to be false. The reason is one millivolt is one millivolt, that's 10 to the negative three. So that's one thousandth of a volt, which is not the same thing as one millionth of a volt because, volt because that is going to be one micro volt. So that's false. <clears throat> Next, the prefix micro stands for, micro stands for 10 to the negative six. So that's the answer right there. Uh, next, the voltage, uh, two times 10 to the six volts. So that's two mega volts uh, can be expressed in the power of 10 as two mega volts. Okay, so that's right there. Um, next question, the unit of current is ampere cap A. Very straightforward. Moving on. Uh, true or false? A charge of two coulombs flowing past a given point um, each second is a current of two amperes. So we need to look at how does uh, how is current defined? Current is defined as rate of change of charge. So I should equal change of charge over how much amount of time. So we are given that this is two coulombs and this is one second, which is going to give us two coulombs per second or two amps. So that means this is true. Next, voltage is measured in volts. Pretty straightforward there. Um, next, true or false question. And again, we are trying to uh, have a relationship between current charge and time. Again, current is rate of change of charge. So I equals delta Q, delta T. Uh, we're given both the charge uh, and over how much time it is changing. So that's 24 coulombs divided by six seconds gives us four amps or four coulombs per second, which is what we are given over here, which means this is also true. Moving on. Um, this is relating to the passive sign convention, um, true or false. The question is passive sign convention is satisfied when the current enters through the positive terminal of an element and the power is computed as positive V times I voltage across it multiplied by the current through it. Um, and just as a reference, as I said, it is helpful if we can quickly draw a very simple circuit in which we have a voltage source, say 1.5 volts, and it is supplying some current to a resistor R. And I is the, that current. Now, because current flows from high potential to low potential, the direction of the current is going to be from, uh, clockwise in this case. And as you can see, for the resistor, the current is entering the positive terminal. And we also, we also know that resistors absorb power. How much power? V times I, in this case, 1.5 times I, uh, and passive sign convention is being satisfied over here, <clears throat> which means this is, again, true. Uh, last question, 1.6, power and energy. Uh, we are given the wattage of a toaster, 1.1 kilowatts. Uh, and the current that is flowing through it is 10 amps. We are asked to find the voltage across the toaster. So voltage, so the toaster is a power absorbing element. Um, so it's going to be a positive quantity in this case. Let's see if we can calculate that voltage by using the equation for power. Power is V times I. Um, we need V, we have P and I. So that means that V is divided by i p divided by i in this case it is 1.1 k divided by 10 amps so we are left with 1.1 times 10 to the 2 which is 110 volts all right so hopefully you guys uh, got these questions correct i will see you in class
um, I hope this video helped.